Void Mage Gamer is now partnered with Flipside Gaming. So you can use the promo code on their website, all caps, Void Mage, to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more. It's a great way that you can support both Flipside Gaming and Void Mage Gamer's channel. Hello guys, welcome back to another Commander Top 10 video. It's been a year since I did the previous one for 2017. We're going over the best Commander options for 2018. Seeing as anything additional that we get is usually going to be reprints, supplemental products that don't really introduce us into anything brand new. Pretty much done for the year as far as legendary creatures, just Commander options go. This year was pretty good to us. We had some awesomeness from the very first set of this year, Rivals of Ixalan. Definitely had a ton of awesomeness from that set set and then we had the awesomeness that was dominaria giving us a ton of legendary creatures to work with but quantity isn't always going to be better than quality it may give you a ton of options but sometimes it's fun just playing with one really good commander so please keep that in mind my top 10 is more or less just going to be around creativity and overall presence in the commander format as always we start off these lists with the honorable mentions now from battle bond you did have some legendary creatures that were very interesting very unique but I just don't really feel like their presence in the commander format is really going to be there. That being said, probably my favorite partners were Crab the Unredeemed and Regna the Redeemer. These two just work really well together. You also had Pier and Toothy, but I feel like these two, flavor-wise, you have an angel and a demon. It just looks so cool. One can gain you life, draw cards. Other can give you tokens for gaining life in a turn. It's exactly what Battle Bond was all about. You had partners that synergized perfectly with one another. Amazing. And then the next three are all from Rivals of Ixalan because the set was really amazing. We just had a ton of them. We had Kumena, Tyrant of Orazka, Itali, Primal Storm, Azor the Lawbringer, and there's probably more I'm forgetting about. But these three just stick out. Really cool, really creative that we got a Simic colored Merfolk option that really worked well with Merfolk. Itali just worked out really cool. If you love chaotic red decks, Itali's nothing but fun. And Azor the Lawbringer is exactly what you would expect out of Azorius. Oppressive control and also gives you a Sphinx's revelation on an attack trigger brilliant card rivals of ixalan was a pretty good set but we do have some other really good stuff in here too that was just a little bit more creative number 10 we're going to start it off here with arcades the strategist one of the options i decided to go with from m19 yeah you could mention nickel bolus but nothing really crazy good about nickel bolus when it comes to being creative in grixis colors just felt like more of the same arcades the strategist encourages you to work with defenders which isn't really something you see a lot i mean we have door in the siege tower which is probably the closest thing that we have have to this kind of manipulation with a weird creature type or any sort of strategy having to do with larger toughness but this actively allows you to draw cards very good if you want to play control very good if you want to have some sort of janky combo deck there's some pretty janky combos associated with Arcades the strategist so in terms of creativity definitely deserves to be on the top 10 probably the best one I would say if you're looking for an outside of the box commander especially from commander 2019 then we have number nine which is Niv Mizzet Perun. Maybe not the most creative because it kind of takes what Niv Mizzet did before and puts him on steroids. He's a little bit harder to cast, a little bit more mana specific, but that doesn't really matter because he's objectively better in every single way compared to the previous Niv Mizzets. Every single time any player is going to cast an instant or sorcery, you get to draw a card. That's insane card advantage. You can combo the same exact way with Curiosity, Ophidian and I. Even if you don't want to do that, which you probably don't even need to. Drawing a ton of cards, sitting on counter spells, drawing cards off of your counter spells, drawing cards off of your cantrips, getting two cards off of something like a Gitaxian probe for zero mana is pretty cool. Getting extra card draws off of your average cantrips like Brainstorm, Ponder, you know, it's going to add up. It's going to make your deck a lot quicker, a lot more responsive. You're going to fill your hand with removal, answers. Really cool card. Definitely deserves to be here on power alone. I think he's one of the more powerful commanders that we saw this year. And number eight, we we have Lazav the Multifarious, another really creative one. Would be higher if I felt like the deck was super powerful. Probably going to make you an easy target and not really have too much to respond with. A little janky to a degree also. You do need to have the perfect graveyard set up in order to make Lazav an absolute threat on the field. You're going to need to alternate between creatures with massive power. 
creatures with infect just to have any chance of dominating with Lazav the Multifarious. Definitely gets creative points, but still curious as to how far this deck can actually go. So if you don't feel like he's as high as he should be, that might change a year from now when we have a different opinion of a lot of these cards. Number seven is Lord Windgrace from Commander 2018. We naturally are going to get some of our best commander options of the year. Lord Windgrace is definitely one of them. Not going to get any points for creativity because the strategy is something that has been used before in other decks that focus on lands, getting extra land drops, that kind of thing. Recycling lands from the graveyard with something like Gitrog Monster while also focusing on landfall like something Omnath Locus of Rage would do isn't very unique but it's still worthy of being considered. Arguably the most consistent commander on this list, you have an engine that is very reliable and if left alone you can easily just do something like Death Cloud, cast those massive X costed black spells like Torment of Hailfire and absolutely dominate the game or just play a lot of other spells because hey with a ton of mana you can do a lot of stuff and sometimes it's as simple as that and you also have amazing removal on the alt getting to destroy that many permanents i think is crazy probably the most underrated thing about him he just doubles as a very good control commander in addition to having any association with landfall triggers number six we have brutaclad telcor engineer this is definitely in my opinion one of the most underrated commander options this year and on power and creativity i think he definitely hits both of those marks pretty well he makes a token and then all of your tokens become a copy of one of your tokens so you can do some pretty janky stuff but right away if you think about the funniest cards that you can use right of replication helm of the host anything that is capable of getting you multiple copies of really awesome creatures the tokens that you end up getting don't even have to be creature tokens they could be something that you get off of investigate triggers you get clues there or you can get the gold tokens off of something like a curse of opulence end up with a lot of tokens that aren't really going to do much of anything until you get a massive creature token out there like a desolation twin one and then very quickly this deck can be pretty scary because all of your creature tokens have haste brutaclad coming out of nowhere is capable of winning you games honestly deserves to be on this list and number five we have yuriko the tiger's shadow just out of necessity has to be on this top 10 list because we desperately needed a blue black legendary ninja that in some way shape or form was capable of being your commander with something like a commander ninjutsu because we did have legendary ninjas before but the ninjutsu ability before didn't work with the command zone you had to use it from your hand so it was next to you useless to play something like Ink Eye Servant of Oni if your whole intent was to use the ninjutsu and surprise your opponents because your opponents weren't going to be surprised. With Yuriko, it doesn't really matter. You just play unblockable creatures, Commander Ninjutsu, her out. She's only three mana and you can keep getting her out there. She's super cheap and the Commander Ninjutsu is pretty much like Derevi so you don't have to pay too much mana and you can keep doing it, making her super efficient that way. And her trigger is really deadly if you know how to build around her the right way. Using those split cards from either the Ravnica blocks or the Amonkhet block. Even though two sides of the same card have different mana cost, the total CMC of that one card is going to be like 11 mana. Really crazy. You can have each opponent lose 11 life. Out of nowhere, you can win with Yuriko. Not unlike with Brutaclad, but I feel like just the necessity of a blue-black ninja commander warrants her being on this list. Number four, we have Zakama primal calamity holy cow this was probably the most epic creature we saw this year a massive dinosaur capable of combos capable of just tearing everything apart the abilities while zakama is well designed and not going to be too broken if you were able to burn your opponent if you were able to draw cards off of one of her abilities she would be absolutely the most busted commander this year that being said having artifact enchantment removal being able to hit creatures being able to even gain some life it's all pretty valuable. It's consistent and it can be oppressive in its own way. You could just have a very good Naya based control deck if your entire purpose of your deck isn't eventually just beating the crap out of your opponents with Zakama. You can go in a few different directions with her, which is what I really like, because the other dinosaur, Gishath, from last year, didn't really allow you for any sort of versatile build around. It was pretty much just dinosaurs, or you can go to hell. Number three, we have Joira, Weatherlight Captain. Now we're going to be going towards, objectively, the more powerful commander options from this year. And Joira, in terms of any sort of implications for competitive EDH, she may very well be the most competitive commander option from this year. Filling your deck with those Cheerios, zero-costed artifacts, you have some pretty cheap combos that you can go and win with. 
if your deck is built around Storm, which usually if you're playing the Cheerio strategy, you want to go win with something like an Aetherflux Reservoir, you have a reliable way to win there. In my opinion, not going to really give other competitive EDH decks a run for their money, but you do have a pretty powerful engine here that can also be underrated if you want to play casual EDH because drawing a card off of casting something like an Artifact or just any historic card is still good consistency. It's not as powerful as something like niv in terms of giving you that card advantage, but it can really add up and she is powerful. Number two, we have Muldrotha the Gravetide. Whether you want to play casual EDH, whether you want to play even more competitive EDH, I feel like she's probably one of the most well-rounded commander options we saw this year. In Sultai Colors, you already had a pretty deadly combination in EDH. Pretty consistent control commanders, pretty consistent graveyard-based commanders. Muldrotha is probably going to be the most powerful of the Sultai commander options now. Being able to play one of every permanent type and up to one of them from your graveyard yard each turn enables combos especially if you want to copy your Muldrotha you're able to do it over and over again if you want to go into those degenerate combos thankfully you're going to have to spend a lot more money on things like lion's eye diamonds things that you can constantly get back from your graveyard there are a lot of combos that you can do with her but even if you don't combo which is probably why Muldrotha is better than Joyra because I honestly think that if you want to play any more casual variety, Muldrotha also works out pretty well. Being able to play cards from your graveyard is really good regardless of how competitive you want to end up playing. And that's honestly why she's number two is because it doesn't really matter your play style. I think she's pretty good. And then number one, we have, in my opinion, the most creative while also being kind of like Muldrotha, competitive or non-competitive. You have a pretty powerful commander here. Aminatu the Fate Shifter, super cheap three mana in amazing colors, Esper, where we haven't really seen too many commander additions in a while. This is the same deck where you ended up getting Yuriko, so probably the best one to go with. Aminatu, you have three abilities here. While she may not be overly powerful herself, the fact that she is capable of synergizing with Enter the Battlefield abilities, something we don't have too much of in Esper, you have the ability to blink something you have, a permanent, could be anything, a land, with her minus, which is probably the best thing about her, which is kind of funny because her plus and her alt are almost never really relevant if you're going to be playing the most powerful Aminatu decks unless you absolutely have nothing else to do her minus is really the best thing about her but it's so good because even if you don't want to play with the awesome flicker decks you can try and focus on her plus and her alt more and you can take her in multiple different directions versatility is really what you get here with Aminatu if you want to play less competitively you can focus on top deck manipulation you can focus on just average ETBs to me I don't think there was anything any sort of standout when it comes to competitive EDA I really feel like the most competitive tier 1 EDH decks are still pretty safe. I don't think anything here is threatening them. So all things considered, you really have to look at the casual decks. You really have to look at it from that perspective when you address any sort of power. Haminatu, I think, is objectively the most powerful commander because ETBs are just so powerful. We saw Azor the Lawbringer. I mean, think about being able to blink this guy over and over again every single turn. There's a lot of things you can do. You can have some oppressive control strategies. You could focus on combos with Deadeye Navigator, which is already a pretty oppressive combo maker. So there's just a ton of possibilities with Aminatu. Really amazing commander option. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this top 10 list of commander options for 2018. Just in my own opinion, of course. So let me know what you think about commander options from this year, your own top 10. Look forward to reading the comments section. You guys have a wonderful day. Voidier signing off. See you all next video.